Hi, this is Lenny Moore. I'm the composer for Outcast. I want to thank everybody who's backed the project so far, and I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the music from my perspective. First, I'd like to just say thank you guys uh, for all the people that have backed us to date, and just want to let you know how much we really appreciate all of your support, all of your ideas. It means a lot to us. This is such a labor of love as far as our feelings about this project. When I was brought into this, I thought this would be a great opportunity to produce an epic orchestral score for a wonderful game. The game that I originally saw in development uh, was really rich in imagination. It was beautiful in its imagery and very classic in its place. It's an adventure that was full of the traditions of great sci-fi and fantasy. And it was also an opportunity for me to work with the Moscow Symphony Orchestra and Chorus, which I'd worked with before on a documentary film. In my first communications with the developers, uh, which are the same people that now own the, the Outcast intellectual property and are part of Fresh 3D, they were very clear about wanting a big orchestral score with a European orchestra. And after hearing my work from a documentary film called Trinity and Beyond, they really liked my filmic style as well as the performances of the Moscow Symphony Orchestra. They indicated that they wanted longer ambient or atmospheric pieces, generally about seven minutes in length, which at the time period, any sort of uh, ambient piece in a video game was like, on average, 30 seconds, maybe a minute. So this is really sort of an extraordinary thing. They also needed several battle cues with varying levels of intensity, uh, all of which would be loopable uh, main title or main theme, um, end credits, and uh, also a few short pieces for when you die and when you uh, achieve certain milestones or a logo for the company Appeal, which was the company that was making the original game at the time. And they wanted it all delivered in a format that was like a music CD format, um, which also at that time period uh, was just the beginnings of CD quality audio in games. So in composing this material, I realized pretty early on that I needed to find a way to connect the entire score together, both thematically and harmonically. And I accomplished this in a couple of ways. Uh, first, by using uh, what's called a light motif, uh, which is um, you know like a small fragment of a theme, and you can hear that in the main title theme, and you can hear it interwoven uh, throughout all of the the regional pieces uh, in all the different areas, like Shamazar and Talonzar and stuff like that. Uh, there's individual themes and melodies for each of those regions but then interwoven with that is my what I call my arma theme which is my uh, arma is a uh, Latin for uh, a call to arms and the text that was for the choir is all in Latin I'll talk about that a little bit later so one component of this was being able to weave all these thematic ideas together so that it created some connectivity. The second thing that I did in this score was to choose an unusual, what we call a scale, which is a series of notes, and use that as sort of the general tonality, the general feeling of the entire score. And the particular um, notes that I chose as far as my tonality it allowed me to modulate into different key centers and uh, using different techniques I could create a harmonic continuity from composition to composition, from region to region and situation to situation um, by having uh, you the player hear all these different related tonalities together And as you moved around in the game from one area to another, over time these tonalities would blend together until all that you would really sense is that there's an underlying connectedness, that all the regions belong together, that they were part of the whole. And I felt that this approach would give you, as the player, the most immersive game experience possible on the music side of things. 
This was originally written for a fairly large orchestra. It was an 81-piece orchestra. It included about 12 different woodwind players playing different instruments, 11 brass players, four percussionists, piano, harp. A chorus involving 24 voices, mostly taken from the Moscow Opera Company, and over 50 different string instruments. So it was a big group. That said, it was very typical of what you would consider a symphony orchestra size of uh, players. And we were really lucky because this is one of the first video game scores that was utilizing a live orchestra and choir. Uh, there were a few games before Outcast that used this approach. But as I mentioned before, you know, CD quality audio was kind of being used more and more at that time period in video games. So before that, it was general MIDI and, um, and then tone generated stuff even before that. Uh, if you go way back. I specifically used Latin text for the choir. That was a request by the developer. They wanted some Latin text for the choir to sing that related to an adventure. So I had some help on this. Uh, there was a very dear friend of mine, and I was trying to figure out where I could find some source material that was Latin uh, that was also about an adventure, and this friend of mine suggested Virgil's The Ennead. And uh, I did some web searching about it, and then basically got a couple of books uh, with different translations of it, and combed through those, and uh, I found this interesting website. It was called The Virgil Project, and it was the University of Pennsylvania um, Classics Department, and they were putting together an online resource. And I contacted the head of that department and said, hey, I'm doing this video game, and I'm interested in uh, using some Latin text from this particular thing. Can you assist me, or do you know somebody who could assist me with this? And he turned me on to a person there who actually helped me get all the uh, eleison, which is the singable form of Latin, together for this project. Uh, she was just such a huge help in really flushing all this stuff out. So when you listen to a piece like the main title of Outcast, um, the Latin lyrics are Arma Virumque Cano, uh, which translates to I sing of a war and a man of war. And it's just perfect as far as how it relates to the storyline. The piece that you're listening to now, which is from Shamazar, uh, the Latin in this is O Patria, O divum domus ilium, et includa bello, moenia dardanidum. The translation of this would be, O oh, my country, O oh, Ilium, home of the gods and walls of the Trojans. And for some reason, that sort of resonated with me as far as something that would be very fitting for the Sh Shamazar uh, piece, which is the piece that you're listening to right now. And in this piece, I used uh, another Latin phrase, which was, O socie neque ninare sumus ante malorum, O passi graliora dabitis quoque finim, which translates to, O oh, friends, for we're not strangers to former times of adversity, of those who have suffered more grievous disasters, God will grant an end to these evils as well. And, you know, it's, that's perfect for what was going on with the Talon and uh, what Feyron was was doing to them as far as enslaving them and uh, all, all the story points that really uh, fit what I was trying to do with the lyrics. And here's an example of what the score looked like. This is uh, my handwriting. Uh, you can see on the hard part that I had an idea which I scratched out. Um, uh, but everything else is what you hear in the recording. And you can see as the music's playing um, you know, all the different ideas. Those of you that don't read music, it just it's just sort of, you know, to me, um, handwritten notation is just really pretty to look at. And, you know, there's times where it gets a little little busy and crazy and a lot of black dots on the pages. 
This is what Shamazar uh, looked like originally. This is the um, original uh, sound, the original sound design, and, and uh, as well as the Shamazar piece of music. And you can see uh, the way the atmosphere looks in the background with the moons. And this is uh, another work in progress clip of what the Shamazar region is looking like. And you can see how everything's uh, progressively getting updated. This is not the final version, uh, but it's, it's some new footage for you. Um, and I've got uh, the Shamazar music playing in the background. Um, and you can see how timeless the music just fits with what the fresh 3D guys are doing um, as they are doing these prototypes to show what the upgrade to high definition visual aspects are going to look like. I'd like to talk a little bit about what happens if we get funded and then what happens if the stretch goals get funded. So if we get funded, you're going to see a beautiful high definition version of the game, everything that's been listed on the homepage as far as improvements to the gameplay, all that kind of stuff. You're going to see the original music in the game, although we have remastered it. You probably won't notice any difference in the remastering compared to the original, other than uh, we just sort of did some very subtle uh, improvements to maintain the integrity of the audio. If we do get the higher stretch goals, that means new music. I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about this possibility of re-exploring this material and creating some amazing new stuff for you guys. With the 1.35 mil goal, we're looking at doing new intro movies as well as a, uh, a backstory movie from a Talon point of view of the coming of the Ulukai. There'll be some new music in that goal, combat themes, uh, exploration material for Shamazar Undergrounds. Uh, if we make our, our highest stretch goal of 1.7 mil, then we're going to introduce a new world, Kizar. And that's another 15 minutes of brand new music. Also, that entire 30 minutes of new material will be done with a live orchestra. And personally, I can't wait for us to achieve that. That would be awesome. For the new material, what my initial thoughts are as far as how I'm going to approach this is, I think the best word to describe it is reverently. I really want it to feel like it was like the lost music cues from the original game. Uh, I want it to feel like it, it, it's so organic and part of the original material, uh, not only in the recording process, if we do record it with the live orchestra, but also in just the way that I write it. It's, it's, it's really going to be about doing everything I can to make sure it, it fits the previous material. It should just be an extension of the previous material. Thank you all for watching and listening. I can't wait to see how the Kickstarter pans out. Please spread the word about the project any way you can, through Twitter, Facebook, whatever. It's, it's, it's all about getting the word out and uh, getting people excited about the possibility of an HD version of Outcast. Thanks a lot.